Hey guys, welcome to a new episode of uh, just tying the Pike Streamer. Uh, today we tie a little Pike Streamer, maybe 15 centimeters, which is a prox 6 inch or something like that. And we tie a really light, light streamer, and the tail we tie on a mono wire, hard mono, 050 I think, or 060. And um, yeah, that's what we do. So we just get that in the vise, and then we get our thread. I got this really nice new bobbin from Tiemco, really love it already. And then we just tie it onto the hard mono a bit to get it tied together and a bit more stable. It's a bit more trickier to tie on a hard mono, a hard mono instead of a shank as it's quite flexible. But uh, it also has nearly no weight in the water, so our tail is really not uh, just descending slowly, not dropping down. The stream is going head first, so that's a good thing about it. So we just make it also really short, otherwise it gets too difficult to cut. And we take this nice lighter, <laughs> thanks Nico, and uh, just burn the tips, melt it together. Watch out the GSP thread, it's really, um, really sensitive to heat. So we do it like that, and then um, I need some glue, give me a second over there so we do it with the Gulf super glue I heard it's similar to Saber Gap I haven't tried it yet so that's the first streamer I'll tie with it and then we just use some glue here to get this really nice and solid as this just makes it easier for us to tie on it So we tied the tail with Nyad. We've got two pieces of Nyad here. One is a one is a little bit shorter, one is a little bit longer. And uh, for the tail I like to have a shorter piece. So just take a small amount, not much, as the fly is supposed to stay light and we just play with a little bit of volume. And then we take our our cap brush, you can get it in every pet store and just brush out the underfur like that. And then we pull out the tips, align them again to get it even a bit shorter. Cut the remainings and then we just gently put that on top of here and uh, tie it down. to do and as flesh material we take a little bit of these ripple ice fiber and black not too much just a bit to go all around the um, the uh, model have a little bit of shine everywhere like that Good fold the remaining bits back and tie them down. And you see, it's it's quite tr tricky to tie on a on a hard mono tail. It gets easier as thicker the mono fill. But um, it's worth giving it a try. The fly is swimming really really nice. Um, yeah, like that, and then we tie another piece of uh, Nyad in, um, just to get a little bit more volume in the tail. Um, also just a small amount. But this time we tie it in reverse, um, as that's just giving it a little bit more volume in the tail section. So we just 
tie on top of it, loose wraps that just folds the fibers all around our monofill in every direction. And then we can just with um, the knife you can just brush it back and it gets a bit into the position and you can just fold it back like that. It's quite nice and easy to do like that. And you see it's quite hard to put a lot of pressure on the monofill because it's softer than metal and therefore I secure the thread wrap here now with a little bit of super glue just to make sure it's not opening up. And we take again some, well not again, we take some uh, hedron flesh, oh you can see that. Just a few strings, not much. Just to give it a little accent. And the water. Just tie that down. Fold the material back. You also can't use a clamp here, as the weight would just pull the mono down. So that makes it just a bit trickier, but I'm pretty sure you manage. And if you don't, you can still tie it on a shank, but then the fly is just getting a bit heavier. And then we just do a knot, just kind of a big half hitch on top of the tail, and cut the thread. Just secure it again with the uh, Gulf super glue to make sure it's not opening up. And then we can put the tail aside, let it dry. And now we can use our hooks. Got some really nice hooks for testing from uh, Rudi Heger, John Rover, the premium Pico. Um, and they're made in Japan, I tested them already, they're really really sharp and really really thin. So the wire is really thin but they still have a lot of strength in them. So a pike won't bend them open but you can tie really nice um, and light flies which will descend really slow so you can fish them really slow. And that's quite a nice thing in the winter sometimes. So what we do, we just put a thread wrap on the hook shank like that. A little bit of super glue in the game. like that. And we have a nice bend of the uh, hook here. So we can lay our mono in here and then fold it back and the loop will lay on the hook shank. And then we can place our our tail we just tied before perfectly in it. So it's a really nice hook for doing these kind of stuff. So like that we tied the all the way in, into the hook band here and now the uh, mono loop will lie on top of it and we can just grab our tail which is then just folding in here that's perfect
way back, secure it with a little bit of super glue. So this is really durable, not really light. You can cut it here. You don't have to fold it back or anything, if there's no hook in the back. Um, there's no chance the pike is pulling it out. So like that it's just fine. Just tie in the rest of the monofill. And then we can stop tying the rest and now we just put a little bit of bucktail here and uh, then put the uh, naiad on top, a little bit of flesh again and repeat that once and then the fire is finished. <coughs> here again with a little bit of bucktail. It's my last bucktail so I have to get the last black one so I have to get a new one. But uh, yeah, we have nice back tails, definitely. A nice thing to tie with. Um, we tie it in like that. We want the buck tail to overlap a little bit the tail section so we don't get a gap here. So we just tie it in just the usual way three loose wraps, four maybe, and then just spread it a little bit around. And then we can. Just race it by tightening the thread. So as this is the body section, we don't want to have it raised too much. Therefore, I tied it in the usual way. The next time we will um, in front, we will hollow tie, and I usually just tie down the tips. I really don't care much about them. You can cut them, but it's just making a mess. And then we take a little bit longer now yet, mm -hmm. which we will just reverse tie on top of the bucktail. few loose wraps and it's just laying completely around the hook with no problem of having any holes and seeing the hook shank through it and we can just brush it back. And just tie everything down. out of it. You see I'm hardly using any material so I keep the fly really really light will be really nice for casting the thing and uh, on top of that we just for the bling do a little bit of flesh -a boom not much I have four or five strands here and just place them on top and if I do that I always check the first length it's going nearly all the way to the tail and then reverse the remaining bit so I have already different lengths of my flesh in it as well. So like that. I take a little bit of super glue. And now it's the uh, we have to gap kind of the middle bit and um, we have two possibilities to do it. Either we do it with text stream or with the uh, the reflector flash and as the reflector flash is really black I'll just go with the reflector flash just tie it in chenilles in all kind of way are always a good uh, way to, to, to cover space on a hook shank without uh, creating a lot of uh, weight to the fly as there's hardly any material in it, so you can just wrap it forward on the hook shank, get some volume into the body of the fly without uh, making it heavier, and just go in tight wraps all the way up front, like that, should be enough, and then we catch the chenille with the thread again once, keep the tension high, go a few reps in front, a few reps back again, and then it's already secure. Cut 
shattered. What I'll do then is just to tie a few wraps on top of it back again to secure it properly. Like that. And just brush it out. And now we take our bucktail and do the hollow tie as I said before. Don't take too much here, it's just not necessary. And just go one, two, three loose wraps. You can help catch the fibers by the weight of a bobbin. If you use a proper bobbin, the bobbin will do the work for you. And while the bobbin is holding the material, you can spread it easily around the hook shank as you want it. And then just pull it tight and they rise really nicely. And just tie it down with a few wraps. Get your reverse tool and just fold the material back. Make sure to pull the thread out straight. Then just tie some wraps in front of it to get it in position. And also here it's nice to have a bobbin that is not putting too much pressure on the uh, thread and here on this one you can just adjust it with your hands um, because if you do too much pressure on the, uh, or if you have too much pressure on the thread you really pull hard into uh, this cone you're building for reversing the bucktail and always pushing it down again which is just increasing your time of doing it so and if you don't put much tension on it it's really easy even with thin threads to build up a cone so that's always a nice thing to have see if I would pull now you see maybe I don't know if it's visible you get a gap in here as it's just laid really gently on top of each other and then you would use a lot of more or you would need much more thread to build up the cone what you also can do always is of course you can say I'm using a little bit of super glue here to secure the cone so it's not slipping or getting pushed in by the thread and then I keep on tying on my cone. And that's another possibility. So now we have our material distributed around the ocean. Tie it a little bit sideways now, so I get the uh, the bottom material a little bit flatter to the um, to the hook shank. See, so if I tie it in, a, in an angle like that, I can adjust the height of the bottom section. It would go in an angle like that. Now I can hide the, uh, adjust the height on the top. If I go straight, I will affect both sides. So, I like it like that. I'm going to take another bunch of layered. Not too much. This time of the uh, longest fibers in the, on the belt to uh, cover all the uh, side of the knife, take out the under fur again. I can just brush it and this if you brush it it's just spreading the knife a little bit and I can easily reverse it. So really hard to use any material here. Just uh, to keep the fly light and simple. And now we just 
take a little bit of the monster dab uh, for that. We've got one more pack of black monster dab here. Um, monster dab is the dubbing I'm producing. Um, you can buy it at big streamers, but now I also increase the uh, numbers of shops that are selling it. So it's already available at Fly Fishing uh, Nation Pro Shop in Cologne, there you can buy it. Um, and today I send it out to E10 Fly Fishing in the Netherlands and also to uh, FFP Fly Fishing in Germany. So that are the four shops you can buy it from now and next week also Smart Lose will uh, will get the monster up and then you have five shops where you can buy it. So we just tie in the monster up, it's really easy, like that, nothing more. And then we take a little bit of super glue. Finally I got some super glue with the brush again. Let's hope this one's better than the zapper gap which is uh you use it one week and then nearly half of it is already solid and you can't use it properly anymore. So make a knot into the wet glue, cut the thread and as always just brush the material back. And now we have a nearly finished pipe fly, only the eyes are missing. It's a really light fly tied on a really light hook, but a really wide gap. You can see it's quite a lot of volume and the hook is still sticking out, so we will have a really good hook set. And um, the hooks are quite good valued for, I think, which hooks are in there, 25 maybe. I don't know. It doesn't say in the uh, package, but well, I think it's 20 or 25 hooks, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and that for, I think, 10 euros is quite good for pike hooks. Usually I tie my partridge hooks, but uh, because this fly here is supposed to be really light. I changed to the drum over one. And I'm really looking forward to testing this fly in uh, Rügen. So we just put some tear mender on the um, spot where we place the eyes. What's happening, it's a really thin latex glue, latex based glue, usually for leather. But um, what it does, it's soaking into the material when you have really fine material and going all the way through to uh, to the uh, hook shank and um, connecting your material with the hook shank which is giving you quite a solid head and when we take these uh, UV fluorescent eyes they're pretty uh, similar to the Bauer eyes and then we just use some of the e 1000 you can buy everywhere in uh, Holland or uh, just ask the fly shop as in Germany I think uh, at least the bigger bottles like are not allowed to sell however put some e thousand on here place the eye on top place the eye on the other side don't mind the white gap here of the uh, of the tear mender. It will get transparent after a while. Just get the tear mender from the hook eye. Get the eyes in position and tighten them with the eye tool. 
So the fly is finished, glue dried a bit. It's not completely transparent yet, but it will turn in the next half an hour, I think. And uh, we have a really light fly with a lot of volume. And uh, we have a really light tail, which is really movable. So I uh, hope we'll catch some pikes on that. Have fun trying it out. Thanks for watching.